All right, hey everyone, welcome to this week's Platinum Mastermind Call. We are in your September sales challenge. I know we've had lots of wins. Adina got wins. She started getting higher price tags for her work. Sylvia got wins. She also started getting um, more money. We had them raise their prices. I know Claudia's had some wins. She's got a big deal on the table with the city of Chicago. Uh, Jamie's had wins of clients coming back to her and asking her to do more work. So September sales challenge, so far so good. We're doing pretty well. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and then what I decided to do, right, is we have Kayla Hodges with us. And uh, Kayla and I met at Grant Cardone's offices in May. Was it May? Was that the sales execution workshop? Oop, your audio just went out. Uh, it's me. Oh, there it I think All so. Right. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So basically what happened is uh, we were there for a sales execution workshop with Grant Cardone and their team. It was only like 60 of us in the room for like a weekend. It was super cool. And Kayla was working the room. Well, first of all, Kayla was a woman, which although there are more women in the Grant Cardone spaces and in the Grant Cardone universe, we are still few and far between. <laughs> Even though it has grown, there are still aren't that many of us. Um, and she was working a room like it was nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> and Zenia and, Zenia and I immediately took notice of Kayla working a room like it was nobody's business getting leads booking calls she sent me a card I'm like this one understands sales right so um she now helps women with sales and uh, I decided to have her come in to talk sales with you all for our September sales challenge so welcome Kayla Thank you, Amanda, for having me. I appreciate you so much. I love everything that you're doing. And I love that you um, really pour into the women that are in front of you and show what's possible. I think that it's absolutely incredible. And I'm happy to be here and support you and this. And, um, you know, thank you all for having me here this morning. Yes, uh, my name is Kayla Hodges. And I'm um, super cool stepping out on my own um, because there's so far and few women, right, in this field of teaching sales. I'm actually um, the number one female sales trainer under 30 right now. So that's super cool. You know, I don't want to say that's so special because there's so few people, but I think that it's really amazing for us to be able to step into our power and what we could possibly do if we make the decision to choose ourselves, right? And, um, you know, I was talking to Amanda this morning and I was like, what is it that, you know, your girls need? Like, what do they need in order for them to be the most successful? So this morning I, I'm going to be speaking to you about why it's okay for you to be charging a high ticket item and for you to feel really, am I allowed to cuss? Am I no? Go, oh girl. Yes. Great. <laughs> for you to feel really damn good about it. I, would, I just want to make sure I ask permission first, right? Um, <laughs> so you know, I want you to feel really damn good about it because you know, with absolute certainty that you're being authentic and you're being genuine and that you are not asking something that has a lack of integrity for yourself. Right. Um, and before I go into that, I just want to give you a little bit of context because I've not always been the person that could work the room and knew how to talk to people and, and knew what to do. Um, four or five years ago, I, I had seen a really, really dark place in my life. I was, you know, in my living room and, um, my ex-husband was very, very drunk. Um, it was in the middle of the night and I was in a fetal position on the floor and he was kicking me in my stomach over and over and over again. And I remember like feeling completely helpless in that moment and crying out to God and asking him to save my life. And my three-year-old daughter at the time was asleep in the next room. Um, she's nine now. Um, and she told me that, she was actually awake during this time um, a few weeks ago. So that was really interesting to hear from her. But um, in that moment, I completely felt helpless um, and crying to God to save my life. And I hated myself. I didn't feel beautiful. I was told every single day that I was never going to be good enough. I was never going to amount to anything. I couldn't walk past him in a hallway without being pushed or pinched or my hair pulled or stepped on. Um, and I lived like, like that for a while. And I never thought that I would be the woman that would incur something like that. But until I made the decision um, to start standing for myself and start working on who I am and realizing that I attracted like all this toxicity into my life because of the actions that I chose because I was hurt. And until I was willing to start working on all those things, and start attracting the things that I wanted in my life, I would never have become the woman that I am today. Um, so 
that being said, um, I think it's so important that we all look at ourselves and we see like what areas are of our life are not serving us. And we allow ourselves the ability to have the courage to remove those things. When it comes to your business and when it comes for you in sales and it comes from you stepping into the woman that you're becoming and stepping into the leader that you're becoming, you have to make a decision. Um, at this event you know, that I met Amanda at, I met Dave Robards and he asked me a question that completely will change my life forever. He asked me, Kayla, are you going to take responsibility to become the woman that you know that you can be? And I hated that question at the time. Um, I still had the wrong people in my life. I still had the wrong situations. Um, and I didn't have a connection with uh, a close connection with a lot of people. Didn't have a close connection with my daughter. And um, I thought I could just go around and hope for things to happen and that they would happen for me. Um, when you take responsibility of who you can become, there's so much that is possible for you. So this morning, talking about high ticket items, at the end of the day, we're talking about how much you feel worthy for charging that price and for accepting that money. And what I see a lot with a lot of women is that there's a lot of money wounds and there, there is a lot of generational wounds um, regarding worthiness, regarding stepping into your power, um, having a voice. Um, and also at the same time, how do we step into our power and have a voice without feeling like we're coming across as too much or coming across as maybe like a know-it-all or thinking that we're better than somebody because our attention normally is to step in our power in an authentic way. Or maybe you're on the opposite end where you're afraid to have that voice and you don't want to ask for what you want. And you like to give, 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 give all the time. You're a supporter. You give to people and you give, even though it crosses your own boundaries, you do it anyways, because you're trying to stay in this, you know, loving manner and you don't like confrontation. Right. So analyze yourself and figure out where you're kind of at. Are you a person that, you know, gives, 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 regardless of whether or not it hurts you. And maybe you're doing that in your business. Maybe you're giving and giving and giving, um, without understanding that you're giving so much of yourself, it's hurting you and it's depleting you and you don't feel really good about it. Or maybe you're on the opposite end where you're trying to control everything and you're trying to step into your power and you're not allowing yourself um, the ability to be approachable or the ability for you to stop and listen and really pour into the people that are in front of you. If you're writing down today and you have a notebook in front of you, ask yourself the question, why the hell did you start this business in the first place? Why are you doing what you're doing? Because I promise you, if you're getting on a phone call on a sales call, or you're getting on to um, like an event to go talk about your business and you're really concerned about what you're going to say and how you're going to look and what the other person is going to say back to you and how you're going to overcome the objection, you know, even before the phone call started, the phone calls ruined in the first place because you're thinking about you and you're not thinking about the person that's in front of you. You're so lost in your ego that that's why your business is not taking off. That's why you don't have so many clients coming in that you don't know what to do with. One thing I really love about Amanda, she has so many people coming in, so many leads coming in that she doesn't even know what to do with. And that's because she's heart centered. She really wants your results. She really wants you to go to the next level. And that's why there's so much abundance coming her way. Because when she gets on call, she's not thinking about her. She's thinking about you, right? So how can you step into that? How can you charge something and feel really, really good about it? Um, which, uh, by the way, Amanda, I want to give, I have a 14 uh, module course called Sell Like a Badass. I want to give it away to someone for free um, for whoever's on here. So if you take a screenshot and tag Amanda and tag my Instagram as well, my Instagram is Kayla Living Boldly. I don't know what your exact uh, handle is. If you want to put it in the chat. I'll put them both in the chat. Perfect. Yeah. So if you screenshot this, please put Kayla living boldly and put Amanda's, um, Instagram in the chat. Um, 
and tag me and I'm going to be giving away that course to somebody that does that today. I would love to do that for you guys. Um, secondly, um, I also do have a women's group on Clubhouse. It's called Live in Boldness. It's a women's networking group. Um, so DM me clubhouse on Instagram, and I'll make sure you have access to that as well. Um, I think it's so important that we as women support each other and stand together and have a space where we can also speak authentically about who we are, and we can honor the people that are around us and support them in any way possible. Okay. High ticket items. Who in here legitimately has an issue that you can say to me right now of a recent experience of you trying to sell a high ticket item and then something was off and you can give me some context so I can specifically help you right here right now. Does anybody have that? Sure. Perfect. Sylvia. Hi, What's your name, um, Sylvia? Sorry, yes, I'm Sylvia, can you hear me? Yes, what do you do, Sylvia? Okay. Um, so I raised, so as a result of working with Amanda and, and this platinum call, I raised my, um, signature course from 2000, which included live calls. Um, and I know Amanda has been pushing me forever to say, and said, you know, 2000 was not enough when it included all the live calls and the results I got for people. So I raised it to 5,000 that included the live calls. So it's 2000 with just the online course, 5,000 with the live calls plus, uh, with the course plus six live calls over 90 days. And literally two days later, I sold one. So it was like super excited, sold one at 5,000. Um, so I was like, and then that same day, I talked to another prospect who had been on my email list for a while, bought my book, loved my book. Finally, after like three years, was like, okay, I know, like I wanted to reach out to you. So we got on a call, told him about my live course. He um, said, you know, it was a little higher than he expected, but not that much higher. So it didn't, wasn't out of the realm. And I said, well, you know, if price is really an issue, like there is the, the on-demand, just the videos itself. And he said, no, he's like, I've done that before in the past. I know I need to do live calls. Like that would be the option that I would want to do. I'm like, okay, sounds good. Um, and instead of close, I wasn't able to close him on the call because he said he wanted some time to think about it. He was literally on his way out the door for vacation. So we scheduled the call for Friday got on the call thinking, okay, hey, we're, it's just a matter of logistics. We're just going to get through it. And he basically said that he wasn't, he knows that he needs the course, but he's not excited. Like he's not excited about the, like what he needs to do. So he was like, it's, he said it was hard for him to want to put up the 5,000 for something that he's not like super, super excited to do, even though he knows he needs it. Um, and so it, you know, that I didn't really know what to say because that wasn't where I thought we were going based off of like all the, you know, just leading up to knowing that he was a super warm referral, like he had bought several of my things in the past. So I was kind of caught off guard and basically, you know, he said, is there a way that I um, could get only module one? Like module one's like the key part of what he needs, but not, all, he not, needs the other pieces, but like module one was like the one that he was like really focused on. And he was like, is there any way I could just pay for just module one? I'm like, no, you know, like it's a part of the whole program. And so I guess that I didn't have, I feel like I hadn't practiced enough, like of pe people coming back and saying, okay, they know they need the program, but they only want parts of it and trying to see if they could pay less. Um, and again, like I said, he wasn't super, he was like, I know I need this. He was like, I'll probably come back to you later. You know, opportunity cost wise, he knows that he's wasting more time. I guess like, because he's not getting this right. Like I even did the math. I'm like, you're, you're basically wasting $600 a month ongoing because you're not solving this right now. I'm like, you know, you, my course will pay for itself type thing. And he was like, I know I get it. He was like, it's just hard for me to feel excited about spending the money on this. Mm, mm, perfect. Okay. So hopefully that gives you enough context. Yes. Do you have kids? I do. I have two kids, an eight perfect. and 10 year old. Perfect. Okay. So when your kids um, need to go to bed, and it's late and you know that they need to go to bed in order to get a good night's sleep so that they're not cranky and they're up for school in the morning. And they're telling you all the reasons as to why they don't need to go to bed. You love your kids so much, right? Yes. Yeah. And you're going to stand in your power and honor the fact that they want to play and that they want to have fun. But in order for them to be able to have a good day at school tomorrow, they need to go to bed. There's, there, there's no option of them being able to have a little nap now and a little nap at 3 a.m. There's no option for that because you know that they need to go to bed regardless of how uncomfortable and, and angry they are. 
I don't care that you're watching the new Cinderella movie on uh, Amazon Prime. It doesn't matter. You need to go to bed, right? So when we get on calls, this is again, going back to going back to being right. So we, we all as humans, we like to, um, have things we want to have things. Right. And so we start being human doings rather than human beings. And we start do, 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 do all the time in order for us to have a thing versus being the person that will have that example. If I, um, after, you know, my, um, abusive relationship, I decided that I'm going to become a bodybuilder. Um, I had, I was overweight. I didn't like myself at all. Really, really insecure. Um, and I saw these girls that look like Barbies and I was like, Holy crap. How the hell do I look like that? I went to a gym, asked the guy, I was like, how do I do this? He's like, looks me up and down kind of laughs. It's like, it's going to take you even a year to even get close to looking like that. And I won my first competition in nine months. Woo. But my whole point in all of that is that the whole entire time that I was training for this competition, I don't give a crap what anyone said, what anyone did. I kept telling myself every single day, I was like, I am a champion. I am a champion. First place, I'm a champion. I would imagine being a champion. I am a champion. And guess what? As a champion, my behaviors and my habits are going to be a little bit different than me not being a champion. When I'm a champion and I identify with being a champion, I'm going to not eat that extra spoon of peanut butter, even though I want to, I'm not going to drink alcohol when I'm on my, um, my fitness plan of, of doing this. And I'm not going to want to, because it's out of alignment with who I am. So when you make the decision that you are a powerful businesswoman and you're really effing good at what you do, And that's who you are and you're standing in it. And somebody tries to tell you, oh, but this, oh, but whatever, oh, but this. And you are making the decision to honor your clients. It's not about you. And that call, there's nothing to do with you at all. You, you, nothing, no ego, no nothing, nothing. Not, Not knowing how to overcome the objection or anything else. It's literally holding space for that person and honoring them. And when they're telling you, that they need to think about it, don't let them get off the call. First off, if they really have to go, then be like, okay, I know that you have to go right now. Like, can you talk, um, an hour, right? Have it the sooner that you can get them on the phone, on the call, the pot, like the faster, um, because of, um, the, the sower and the seed, right? Like the Bible, um, John, um, who is it? Who's Tony Robbins mentor just completely lost my mind. Um, help me, Amanda. Jim Rohn. Tony thank Robbins, you. Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. Thank you. I said John. Jim. Jim Rohn talks about the story where he talks about the sower and the seed, and he says that you know the farmer he was really ambitious man. He kept sowing seeds everywhere, and what happened when he first dropped all the seeds? The birds came down and they they got the seeds. But he was a good sower and he kept planting seeds. When you plant a seed in somebody and you let them stay there and you walk away, there's a good chance that the birds are going to come and get them. They're going to have somebody tell you, tell them that, oh, this needs to happen. They're going to have a emergency come up where they need to spend some money somewhere else. And they're going to be somewhere else versus being with you right then. And you holding space for them in order to convince them why they need this. And when you're in integrity and you know that they need this course and you know that they need that most people won't choose themselves. Understand that most people will choose other things. Most people will not honor who they are and make the right decision for their life because they're comfortable or because um, they don't want to get out of their comfort zone, or maybe because they think other things in their life are more important than them. Most people don't choose them. So you as a powerful woman honoring the person that's on the call in front of you, and they say that they need to think about it. And you're asking them, we're like, okay, I get that you need to think about what is it that you need to think about and asking them questions to really pull out what the real main concern is will help differentiate you. Secondly, when you're getting on a call with him the next time, and he's giving you all these excuses, you have to go back into qualifying the person. When you qualify a client, you're trying to figure out what pain they have. And you're also trying to figure out where they want to go. So if he started telling me that rather than us talking about it, I'm going to start going and asking them questions all over again. Um, My proprietary method I have is is bad, bullet, amplify, dominate. Um, 
amplify, I have an onion method. So my onion method means that whenever you ask somebody a question and they tell you the answer, they basically tell you a bullshit lie. <clears throat> it is an onion. It's a pretty onion. And they wrap the onion in tissue paper. They also put a pretty bow on it. They spray it with freaking glitter and they hand it to you. And they're like, here you go. This is my problem. And you're like, oh, okay, that's great. And so you have to spend time every single question as you unwrapping another bow, another tissue paper, another layer in order to figure out why they really have that problem. So if I say, Hey, you know, what's the biggest problem that you're having in your business right now? And somebody's telling me, Oh, well, you know, I can't get clients. I'm like, okay, tell me more about that. Right. I'm going to take off the, the, the little bow. I take off the bow. That was one question. Right. And they're like, well, um, you know, just no one's calling me back and I'm calling people and no one's answering me. I'm like, okay, well, why, why is that? Right. And I take off another piece and they're like, well, because, um, I really just don't know what I'm saying. And because I just don't have any energy right now to create good content. And so no one's really reaching out to me. I'm like, okay, well, well, why is that a problem? Right. Another thing. Well, because I'm really frustrated because I really hate what I'm doing in the first place. Well, why? Well, because my husband just did something stupid and now I had to do this thing on my own. And now I'm scared of my success and this and this and this. And now I got the emotional reaction it had nothing to do with the fact that she can't get clients it has to do with the fact that she's scared of her own success. And I'm holding that space for her and I'm honoring her and I'm telling her, I don't care. Um, I don't have to sell this whole thing. I say, hi. I see you. I honor you. I'm going to help you get there. Let's go. Let's go. Right. I know you're scared. I know that this feels uncomfortable for you, but I know that you deserve to have every single thing that you want in this world. You deserve to have the outcome of whatever you're selling. You deserve that. And I'm going to hold space for you. And I I'm going to believe in you because your vision is my vision and I want you to win. You are going to win because it's not about me. It's about you. And when you make it about them and you wanting to see them win, you want to see their outcome and you stand for that as a woman and you listen to them and honor them and you're in your feminine power by listening and holding space, but you're also allowing yourself the ability to honor yourself and hold space for who you are to where you know your worth and you say, and it's gonna cost you $5,000 because that is the bare minimum of what I'm worth for my time. But you are going to pay that because you know that I'm going to fight for you. They're gonna hand you money all day long because they believe you and they trust you. I wanna co-sign that. <clears throat> Yes, very true. Exactly what she's talking about. It's that fierceness, right? So I have a question for you, Kayla, right? Because some, sometimes people, I, I will teach that in our sales boot camps. I'm like, people are full of shit, <laughs> yeah. right? And when you're in sales long enough, you, you know that because you've already experienced all the lies and all the excuses and, and, and you know, they're not doing it on purpose. It's just human beings do some very weird things. That's the way that I explain it, right? So it's not a personal thing. So how do you get that good, right? Where you know that, okay, well, this person might be manipulating this situation over here, or that's not a real thing. That's just like a reaction, right? Where do you get to a point in your sales journey where you're that nimble, where you know these things are going on? Because in my opinion, it only comes with practice. I don't know if you have anything else to say about that. Yeah, um, I would reframe the word manipulate. Yeah. Right? Well, yes. Um, I would just reframe that real fast. And I, and I, and I, cause I already get what you're talking about. I totally get yeah. that. Um, and I, and I'm with you, but just, you know, for anyone that, that just doesn't understand right now, cause that's what it is. But like, you know, let's, the word can be you know, off-putting to people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what I would say is that when I'm making a decision to get on a call with somebody, so before I get on a call with anybody, just so I can, I can show you kind of like my process, um, first off, if I'm not walking the walk and I'm just talking the talk, it's very, very difficult for me to do well in my business. Um, and, um, and an example of 
that is especially in a coaching business. If you are coaching somebody and you're holding space for them and you're trying to get them to a place, you're not only helping them with whatever program, you're also helping them with the mindset aspect. And if your life is a havoc and you're not taking care of yourself and you're trying to pour into other people without pouring into yourself, um, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. You're going to have burnout and you're not going to know what to do. So it's really important that you have your own coach. You have um, ways of being that really make you come alive and feel really good. Um, in order for you to step in and, and honor the person. Um, and I keep talking about honor, right? Honoring the people that are in front of you. <clears throat> um, I don't know everyone's religious, um, you know, expertise. Um, I'm not really super like religious, but I do believe in personal relationship with God. Like my dad's a pastor, my grandfather's a pastor. Um, and I also am very like more spiritual as well. Whenever I, and before I get on a call with somebody, I don't matter in that moment because I'm honoring that person in that moment. Therefore, it doesn't matter what the hell happened that day. It doesn't matter what happened last week. It doesn't matter what is going to happen later that day. Um, at that time, there's nothing but presence, right? Past is gone, future is gone, and I'm present. Um, therefore, if I am upset because my daughter and I just got in a fight or because some lady looked at me rude at the grocery store or because my mom called me and told me some crap about my sister being dramatic, whatever the situation is, I have to let all of that go before I get on the call. Um, and I have to, you know, kind of shake it off and take a deep breath. And I'll even close my eyes. I'll either, you know, pray over that person or just honor that person in my mind. Um, and just say, you know, I'm here. And I just tell myself, you know, I'm here to serve this person and to honor this person. And that's why I'm here. So when I'm coming from that space and I know my onion questions, and I just know that those are onion questions because of my onion theory. I know that whenever I ask about their pain or whenever I ask about what they want in their life, they hand me an onion. And I just know it's an onion because that's what we all do, right? Hey, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Right. Are you good? No, you're probably not good. Right. That's bullshit. You're lying. Right. But if we're so used to it, right. Because who are we to start? Let me just tell the stranger, all my freaking problems. Like we're going to be like, no, I'm going to be respectful of this person and not just word vomit to you that, you know, my cat peed somewhere. I don't have cats. I hate cats, but it's an example. Um, <laughs> you know, but what I'm saying is, is, you know, that those are onions, right? So when I'm coming from that moment and I'm coming to really honor that person and I tell myself, Hey, I'm asking about their pain. They're going to give me an onion. I need to know that they're lying not intentionally, but they're not going to give me the, the best answer that I have to still hold space and dig because they deserve for me to really honor and listen to them and get curious, curiosity. Oh my God, get curious. And I'm sorry that you have a cat there. I didn't mean to disrespect your cat. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm tremendous guilt. Okay. So um, when we um, honor that person and, and we're coming from that space, it, it, it's not bad. Right. And it's not us thinking that we're manipulating them or thinking that, you know, we have to get good at something when you are a, a good friend, right. And one of your girlfriends calls you and she says that she's upset about something and you sit there and you know that she's lying. You're not going to have the, the thought, oh, well, this person's a liar. You're just going to have a thought of like, I care about this person and I'm going to figure out what's really wrong. And if I need to ask in a gentler way, or I need to, you know, pry more information, um, I'm going to do so in a way that's going to be, um, honoring that person. Cause that's really why I'm here. I'm really here to help people. And because I'm here to help people, it's not about me. It's about them. And that's how I get good. I get good because it's not about me. It's about them. Um, in terms of that guys, like when you have a why, like people talk about why I hate why's. I think why is a bullshit too. Um, and I'll explain why, um, your why is never going to be big enough unless it is so big that it gets you out of your bed in the morning. And I thought for a long time that my daughter was my why, right? That makes sense, right? Oh, your kids are your why. This is why you're doing it. And she is at some point, but guess what? If I oversleep, it's not going to affect her financial stability. Took her to Disney world. I was my first time going to Disney world this year, right? I was able to give her all the things I never had, right? I give that all to her and uh, she's good, right? Like today, like we had the whole leadership, this thing this weekend. I was like, you know what? 
you don't have to go to school today. Like, let's just not go to school and let's just hang out and have our time. Um, but all that stuff again, right? Like, it's not like I'm working my ass off for her to be comfortable in, you know, on the 38th floor of this really nice place in Brickell overlooking an ocean view. I never saw that stuff until I was in my twenties, right? She's nine. She's good. I promise you she's good. Now my mission is to go into third world countries. I want to help women escape domestic violent relationships with their kids, underground railroad style through a whisper campaign, help them be rehabilitated, get them a visa, get them a passport, help them come over to the United States, give them the skills that they need in order for them to have the life that they truly want. That's my mission. My mission is so big. It scares the shit out of me. My mission is so big that I have no idea how the hell I'm going to do it. But I know that I'm responsible to becoming as successful as possible and helping other women just like you also become as successful as possible in order to fund my mission. My mission is so big that when I want to sleep in, I think, oh my gosh, there's a woman that's waiting for me on the other end of the world. She's waiting and she's praying for me. How selfish of me to sleep in right now. I can't do it. It makes me on fire so much to light up, to be able to do something like that and to be able to look at other women and take my fire and literally light the flame of who they are and show them that everything is possible for you. Every single one of you on here right now, you are entitled your birthright to wealth and wealth, not only financially, but you deserve to have the most passionate, sexy relationship of your life. You deserve to have the whatever body you want. You deserve to have a close relationship with kids. You deserve to have the best friends in the world. You deserve to travel and have fun. Are you not putting fun in your life right now? You deserve to have all the freaking things because you are a queen. You are so worthy in so many ways and you deserve to step into who you are. And by you making the decision to step into the woman that you know that you can be, you are going to have such a big impact on everyone around you. Because when you get on the phones with people, regardless if it's for a social or for a professional gain, you come from a place of, hi, I see you. I listen to you. I honor you. If it makes sense for us to do business, people will want to do business with you. I promise you that. If it doesn't make sense for you to do business, they're going to refer business to you because there's going to be no one like you because you're not selfish because you want to do something bigger than you. What's your vision? What's your mission? Is it so big that it scares the crap out of you? If you, it's just about your family right now, it's not big enough. If I gave you $20 million right now and I said, you need to go into the world, you have only a few months and you need to spend all of this on a cause that really means something to you. What would your mission be? What would you be able to build then? What would you be able to do then? right? When you have $5 million to just give away to something that matters to you, then you're making it until then let's go. You are worth more. You can do more. You can become more and you're worth all of it. You're worth all of it. All right. I just went on a whole tangent there. I get really excited about that stuff. So, <laughs> um, is there another question about a high ticket <laughs> to where we can go into that? Because I want to serve in the best way possible here. <laughs> Well, while they come up with their questions, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head where it's that what you're talking about is that conviction piece that a lot of people are missing. So number one, they either go into sales conversations and they're like, oh my God, I have to pay rent, right? Oh my God, the business credit card. Oh my God, this, oh my God, that. Like they're just thinking about bills rather than thinking about serving the person that's there. And what you're talking about, right, is that conviction piece, right? Which is the, this is my mission, let's go. Right. And I just want to co-sign that when you get to that space, number one, you do become more assertive, but it's not in an aggressive way. It's more it's you said it perfectly. It's in that holding space way where, you know, they're giving you an onion because that's what humans do. And it's fine. And they're not doing it on purpose. It's just understanding the game of that's what humans do. Right. But you're standing in that conviction. And when you stand in that conviction, it's exactly what you said. They'll fork over the credit card like no big deal. And if they don't, they're going to send people your way. Tons of people. Adina did not even join us in Persuade to Profit, right? She sent people our way before <laughs> she joined us in Persuade to Profit, right? So I just want to co-sign that it's that conviction piece, 
right? And the conviction comes from, I'm a badass and I'm worthy of this and I'm deserving of this. And also comes from, I have a really big mission. I'm here to help people. That's what, that's why it's hard for me to relax because it's the same. Like I have such a big vision of what I want for my life and also for the company and for the team and for clients and just the world that like, it's hard for me to chill the fuck out. I couldn't sleep last week because I was so excited, (laughs) right? About all of that, right? But when you show up to calls on that, people immediately are like, okay, I can trust this person. This person is for real, right? And then you're able to be more nimble. I know a lot of people to your point um, are like, well, what do I say? What question do I ask? And those are all really great skill sets to learn, right? But there's a portion of it that just comes from, I'm super comfortable in this space right now and I'm just honoring you. And I know you gave me an onion and we're, <clears throat> and we're gonna solve this problem because my mission is bigger than my ego and we're gonna get this problem solved. So I just wanted to co-sign everything that you said because it's true. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I, I like that you talked about, um, about, oh, my red's coming up or, oh, this is coming up. Oh, I need to figure this out. Okay. So this is, this is really, really important. And I, and I've experienced this in my own business, right. Where I would be in flow, right. The whole point, especially as a woman, right. You need to be in flow, be in flow, right. The way you get out of flow, right. is starting to think about fear, right. And ourself, right. Being again, fearful. There's been times in my business where I'm like, I remember one of the most interesting times in my business, because when you go up, you move up in levels. And, um, there was a time it was a Monday and I owed $8,000. I had, you know, some was going to my coach, some was going to my rent and like some was going to some other program, something. And it was like a Monday in the middle of the month. And I needed to pay eight grand that day. And, um, I just like, uh, like, Ugh, like I did not want to do that. Right. And, um, and so I started freaking out, right. Not the fact that I had to pay that. I'm like, yeah, I had to pay it like duh. But then I was like, okay, well, how do I make this next sale? And how do I, you know, oh, Hey, well, I have this other coming up, but okay. So how do I make sure, oh, I need to hit the phone today. I need to do all my follow-ups. I need to boom, boom, boom. And it became not in flow. <laughs> and so then my business literally stopped for like, three days, no sales, three days, because I'm like in this like sporadic mania of trying to get things done. Okay. And this is how you get back into flow. So I'm going to teach you how to get back into flow. When this happens, this is what you do. You first get into gratitude. Okay. Gratitude. Right. And so I started writing down like what I'm grateful for. And I would say it in a way, um, to where I did a manifesting, a uh, stack list. So this is how you do that. You say what you're grateful for right now. And you also say what you're grateful for in the future. And you, what, what you're grateful for right now, what you're grateful in the future. Um, so that your brain doesn't know the difference between the past and the future. And you're writing it like that. So that you're, um, like, you know, bringing that and collapsing timelines back into your life. So, and I would write it like Bob Proctor style. I'm so happy and grateful now that. I'm like, my daughter and I have the best relationship ever. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm making 50 grand today. I'm so happy and grateful now that um, I truly love myself again. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm eating healthy again, you know, like whatever it is, right? And I'm taking big things that scare me and I'm putting them in there, like my $50,000 a day that hasn't happened yet, that will happen. So happy and grateful that that will happen and that now that has happened because I'm claiming that into my life. I'm just going to put that in there. And then I'm also going to put in like, oh, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm eating healthy, right? Well, I made the decision to order meals to my house and I'm going to be eating healthy. So I know that's going to happen with absolute certainty. So those are in there too. So that's the first aspect, gratitude. Then I need to get out of myself and I need to give. So um, contribution, what can I do today to give, right? When you're having um, giving, it could be in two ways. It could be in an enrollment conversation. Hold on, sorry. My daughter just asked me a question. Hi, I understand that. I don't know where how to help you and I will help you in a moment. Great. All right. So um, when I'm having an enrollment conversation versus a sales conversation, this is an enrollment conversation. You're getting on the phone with somebody regardless if they're going to do business with you or not. This could be a friend, right? This could be your mom. And you start asking them about what it is that they want in their life and you stand for what they want. So this would be like, Hey, and I did this, um, this past weekend, right. When's the last time we had like good conversations with people that we actually care about. And we actually stood for what they wanted. We were get so into us that we don't hold space for people. I called my mom and I said, Hey mom, um, like, 
if you could have anything and you can do anything in the world, like what would you want to do? Like money, no issue. She's like, I really want to go to Ireland. Guys, I had no idea that my mom would ever say anything like that. I don't think she's ever been out of the country. And um, I was like, well, why would you want to do that? And she's like, I really want to see my family um, and see my roots and see like where, you know, and I really didn't even know that I was Irish. So that was really interesting. Um, <laughs> And it was me taking the time to stop and stop myself and give to her and give her my presence and honor her as my mom and like hold space for her and, and actually become interested and care that things would happen. When's the last time that you took interest in somebody that didn't have something to give for you? When is the last time that you took time to honor somebody in your life where you weren't going to get anything back in between? And you knew that, Right. Um, and people that have kids, right? When's the last time you sat down and asked them about their dreams and asked them where they wanted to go and if they could do anything, what would they want to do? Well, let's get curious. Let's get go crazy. If I was going to give you a stack of a thousand dollars and you had to go spend it on something, like what would you want to buy? Right. Or, Hey, if we had to go anywhere, travel anywhere, what would you want to do? Hey, we're going to, I'm going to let you cook whatever you want this week. And what place would you want to go in this world? And we're going to cook food from that place. Let's look it up. Let's get really excited. Let's decorate the whole house like it's Paris and let's put lights everywhere. And you just took time to give somebody an experience and honor somebody. And it had nothing to do with you and what you're going to gain because your kid's not going to pay to take your course, right? Or your parent, your mom might not either. But how can I give to make it not about me? Maybe I, I get on a call and I, I'm like, I do one of these, right? I'm like, hey, where who can I talk to that I can just pour into a group for a little little bit because I know that when I pour and I honor and it's not about me, then it comes back so abundantly that I get floored against the wall and then I get scared of my success. <laughs> well, another conversation. Right. Let, let's talk about that. Wait, wait, wait. That's exactly what happens. You, you dropped two amazing gems just now and I want to decompress both of them, right? So number one, uh, you've been talking about being instead of going out and doing, and you talked about how you energetically feel the difference between, holy shit, I have bills to pay. I got to hit the phone. I got to do this. I got to do that. And how things just stop when you do that. I have experienced that as well versus when you're like, it'll get paid, right? I'm going to show up and do what I have to do. I'm going to make the calls. I'm going to show up. You know, I'm going to give. It's going to get paid. And then it does super easily <laughs> without you. And it feels like you didn't even try. That's yeah. what it feels like. So what is the balance? And then I have a second question. What is the balance between, okay, that being and doing? Because where I find a, a lot of women get fucked up here, right? Where it's like, we're either one extreme or the other extreme, mm -hmm. but yeah. how do we stay in that middle, that middle space? Right. And you and I have been in sales long enough where like, we can feel it internally. Like we know something is off. Like I know if I'm in that space for like two days, I'm like, okay, I got to reset this thing and go. But for people who may not be as attuned to that, how do we achieve that sort of like middle ground? Because that's the key there. Uh, I wouldn't even say, um, of us like being in sales and like, that's how we know. I think that you and I are like, um, like connected spiritually. Like I, I really believe that. Um, and that's how we can like really feel our body that we just kind of like look in and, and we're like, how do I, am I feeling right now? Something feels wrong. Um, and that's part of our women intuition as well. Like, right. Like you as a woman, it's like awkwardly because that you as a woman, right. Don't you have like, um, something where you're like, something feels off. Like how, how, we all like, just like, yeah, where have you felt like, Hey, something feels off today. Um, I would check in, right? So if I'm doing my business and you as a woman at the end of the day, you feel freaking exhausted and you're energetically like, oh my God, because you keep giving and giving and giving and giving and you keep calling and you keep trying to do this, right? There's two parts of exhaustion. The one that's like, I give, 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 give. And the one that's like, I'm fearful of what's going to happen. And so I'm trying to, I'm in manic, right? So those two, right? And you can feel like, in your body at the end of the day, which one you're at, like, wh where are you at? Did you give way too much of yourself today? Or did you go in this manic, like craziness because you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to figure it out. And so you're just doing right. Like, which one is it? And like, check it. Um, what I would say in terms of the balance would be when I make a decision, right. And I'm going to be like, Hey, like, I am a businesswoman, but I'm also, um, a connected businesswoman and I, um, and I honor 
whoever I talk to and I, and I love on them and I show them that love. And like, I'm going to come from that space. Um, and I'm also going to be responsible and like, and I identify with that. Then I know that I have to raise my standards for certain stuff. So during the day, if I'm just in this la la la, I'm just going to imagine great things happening. And I'm not, um, doing the actions that would be an an identity to a responsible, loving businesswoman, um, because I'm in this la la, because I think things are just going to come. Then maybe I need to take a look because I just kind of la la all day. Um, you know, a lot of your time should be spent on money generating actions. Mostly 95% of your time should be spent on money generating, money generating actions, but there's also a caveat to that, right? You don't need to have time making sure that your color scheme is perfect you know, um, or making sure that every single little aspect of your calendar is good. Um, if I was today going to say, Hey, I'm going to spend time on money, generating money, generating actions. And instead of me saying, who can I call to close today? I'm going to say, whose life can I change today? Whose life can I call and make them feel important today? Um, and then I would have those two sections. I would have those in my leads, right. And people that have reached out to me, um, I have leads that come in like through Instagram. Right. And so when I reach out to that person, I'm from a place of like giving and holding space versus thinking that I'm going to get anything from them. Um, and so I think that that would kind of be the balance. And I hate saying that because it's you, you really just have to like, listen to your body and, and try something and try it for a week. Say, Hey, this week, I'm going to try this method and then I'm going to see how it feels. And if you keep doing it over and over and it's not feeling good, we're like, okay, maybe I need to change something. But any time that you feel like you're in manic, or if you feel like you're just giving too much there's something wrong, stop, call somebody that knows what they're doing or ask yourself, Hey, what can I do to make sure that I don't feel like this tomorrow? Is that good in terms of, answering yeah, that's, that? that's perfect. Cause that's exactly yeah. what it is. It's that manic. And then when you go into manic, you overdo, and then you deplete and then there's no money. Cause you just went into diminishing returns. <laughs> yes. Correct. Cool. Yeah, perfect. Um, I had one question and I see another one from Sylvia. So for those who are struggling with filling their pipelines, maybe they just started, maybe they don't have like a big um, social following yet. What advice uh, would you have to them? Because one of the things that I see people stress out about is like, where are the leads? Where are the leads? Where are the leads? So like, Mm -hmm. what would you say to that? Okay. So um, I think when you give, you get. Um, People talk to me about like on Instagram, right? on Instagram and you're asking, you're like, oh my God, why aren't people commenting on my picture and liking my pictures? How many pictures did you like and comment that day? I think that that's really, really interesting, right? If you're like, oh my God, why aren't people commenting on my stuff, but you're not commenting, why is it fair for you to judge the fact that people are not commenting on you? Who are you showing up as to where people want to support you? If I walked around and always gave people cookies all the time and, um, people are going to want to like really they get excited when they saw me. Right. They would get so excited. And I don't know if I would get anything returned, but they would really like to see me coming near them because they know I always give cookies. Um, right. I would totally want to hang out with me. The girl always brings cookies with her. Well, bring her along. Right. If you're the person that's super stingy and doesn't want to do anything for anybody and you're always coming around and they're like, Oh, that girl, she's always going to ask you if you could split a latte with her. And, um, you know, she'll be really weird and stingy and she's kind of like reserved and she doesn't really give anything. You're not going to want to bring that person around, nor are you going to want to support her. And when she posts something online going, Oh, you know, business is great and blah, blah, blah. When she, she only cares about her. So why would I get a comment going, you go girl, but she doesn't do that for anybody. So that's the first thing give and you get how to get leads, right? Come up with a way to where you can build community and you can bring people together. And it's not about, um, creating, um, some type of, um, monetary. I built my clubhouse. Right. And it's so funny because I actually built it the, like the day that I met Amanda, right. I literally built it on clubhouse. I was trying to find a women's networking group. Couldn't find one anywhere. I kept asking everywhere. No one had it. And I was like, screw it. So I literally built it on clubhouse. And I think now it has like almost 200 people in it. It's pretty cool. Um, 
but every week it's a try because every week it's not about me. All the women come in there and we all talk about a different subject. We bring a subject from the week before and we all talk about it authentically and honor each other. Everyone says, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. And people made leads in their connections. People got business out of there because it's, we're giving and exchanging energy. So you can do one of two things. Number one, you can take something like that. Like, like I have that group, right? You could take something that already somebody's bought in or like somebody's created and you can funnel people and say, Hey, um, when you're reaching out to somebody, you're like, Hey, you know, uh, I see that you're a woman. I want to support you. I know of a networking group, you know, I would love to give you information about it and like, and honor you in any way. And you're giving something and that's how you're exchanging contact information. Cause you're giving something without expecting anything in return. And then you're getting on a phone with them and you're supporting them and honoring them and that conversation. And if it's appropriate, then you can ask to pitch. If it's not appropriate, ask how you could support her. Um, and that's a way to contact somebody because you're giving. I, yes, I, the, basically my free Facebook group, that is exactly what happened. I was trying to find a Facebook group for women who understood sales and I couldn't find it. So I just made it. And now it has over 2000 members and it's been mostly organically and we've made tons of sales <laughs> yeah. out of there. So yes, that's a really good way. If there's something in the marketplace that you're like, dang, I, I cover this particular issue or I'm trying anything where it's like, I have found like, you're trying to solve a problem for yourself and you can't find it, go make it. <laughs> And that's a great way because other people are looking, right? We have a question from Sylvia and then we're getting back to fear of success because that's a major thing, mm -hmm. right? What have you seen to work well as fast action bonuses to get people to take action that same day of consultation, sales call and not give the answer? I need a couple of days to think about it. I have thoughts on this, but I'll let you go first. Okay, perfect. Um, I would say that why is it that somebody needs a bonus in order to make a decision that would help them? right? Um, if something is going to solve their problem, they will do it. Um, good example. Um, about a year and a half ago, I, um, still single mom, right? Lived in Houston at the time, was in a one bedroom apartment. Um, my daughter was in the living room. I was in my room. Um, I had lost my job. I was, um, behind my rent was going to be due in two days. I was working bartending shifts and my rent was $1,400 and I owed $753. And, um, I got on a call with somebody that was going to show me how to sell coaching programs. And, um, I was doing like behavioral psychology, NLP strategic intervention at that time. And I was going through the course through like Robert Mundane's Tony Robbins thing and, um, got off the call with her. She was like 12 grand, nine grand to get started $3,000 for a first down payment. I didn't have it. My credit cards were maxed out. I had borrowed money from people. There was no one that was going to give it to me. I got off the phone and I felt in my heart and my soul was like, I need to do this. I literally sold my furniture, sold my daughter's furniture. I slept on a mattress on my floor that night. I sold shoes, perfume, uh, purses, sold everything. I raised $4,100 in less than 36 hours. I paid my rent. I paid the course. Then I spent the next week selling every single thing else that I owned, packed up my shit, packed up my car and drove to Miami, knew nobody, knew nothing, stayed in Airbnb rooms, like a room that had cockroaches in it. Right. When I first got here for almost three months, knew no one. Right. But I knew in my heart that I had to do it. And so I would do anything. And I was resourceful to figure it out. And unless I did that, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be seeing this right now. And like, and, and like, just to get context. We're going to get context with this. You're going to make me miss Brickle. <laughs> I don't miss Guys. the traffic. I miss the view though. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be seeing this. There would be no way. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be having um, the financial success. I've never been this financially successful in my whole entire life. It freaks me the freak out, which is why we're going to talk about being financial, but I would have never have done that. So why do you need to give a bonus if you're honoring somebody and you know, with absolute certainty that that's going to solve their problem. If you know, and you, and you really care about this person and you care about what the result that they're going to have by working with you, if you really want to stand for their win, you don't need to give a bonus. You need to find out why they need to think about it. If they need to think about it. It's because there's some uncertainty because they either don't know how the program works or they don't trust you. And if they don't trust you, it's because you haven't held that space because you were, you've been thinking about you in that conversation versus thinking about them. Um, and they're just not hearing something or seeing something. And if you're really coming from a place of really honoring them, they know that they can trust you. Um, and if they think they think about it, 
then it's just because there's some piece of information that's missing and you just have to figure out what that is and, and just and, and act like you're a mom talking to your kid and, and really find out what it is so that you can say, hey, I understand where you're at. This is how to overcome that. We're going to do this because I'm going to stand with you and, and we can make your dreams happen. I love that. That's the energetic perspective. I'll talk about the strategic. You're right. You don't need a bonus. They're just a nice to have, right? Um, and if you really, and there are a nice to have to make someone make a decision quickly and whatever bonus you do, it better not require any of your time if you're going to do it, right? The second thing I want to add is there's a way I need to think about it is a part of the onion that Kayla talks about. It's not a thing, right? So some of the things that you can do is in the beginning of the sales call, and we can talk a little bit about the strategy part here, you can uh, do what's called a pre-close intention. And a pre-close intention is basically like, hey, here's the purpose of the call, you know, based on your application, based on the conversation you, we had at this place in the DMs, whatever, we're going to be talking about X, Y, and Z. I get an idea. I know where this call is going to go, but I have more questions to get more context from you. And if we're a good fit to work together, I'm going to tell you how, and then I'll just need a decision in yes or no on whether we're moving forward mm, right that's really good so, yeah so two things right number one if they tell you i need to think about it later it's bullshit it's the onion and you know it because they just agreed to make a decision right and number two when you start asking questions about why they're even talking to you in the first place you're going to find out just how long they've been thinking about this so you know it's a part of that it's that onion kayla's talking about it's like i'm going to give you an onion and it's going to have glitter on it and a bow but it doesn't mean anything and you have to unlayer the onion and find out what's actually going on. So I need to think about it. It's the bow on the onion. <laughs> mm -hmm. 100%. Because if they hadn't already been thinking about it, they wouldn't be talking to you. Time is the most valuable thing people have. They don't give it away for no reason. Right? So that would be um, a way to look at it. You can add that pre-close intention right? And I need to think about it won't even be a thing. If they do say I need to think about it, then you're like, oh, well, actually 20 minutes ago, you said we were going to make a decision, yes or no. The reason for that is because you can work with a no. You can't work with I need to think about it because it's just the bow on the onion. It doesn't mean anything, right? The second thing, if they tell you, which is the case for you a lot of the time, Silvio, they're like, oh, well, I've had this issue for like six months, I've been, they tell you that all the time. Like, you know, with your clients, this has been an ongoing problem, right? Be like, well, it sounds like, well, they, you know, you just said 15 minutes ago that you've been thinking about this for six months, right? So again, it's just that onion, right? It's, and, and, and you doing that, you're standing for them. Otherwise, what happens? They get off the phone, they keep thinking about it. The situation gets worse. You talk to them six months later and they're 50 grand in debt. Is that helpful? Yes, that's really, really helpful. Thank you. Okay. And then Rolanda um, said to your other point, Kayla, and then we'll get back to fear of success because what you said, it happens to everybody, right? If you're just starting out, it takes a while to build that, the community. So what else can you do in addition until all of that builds up? Oh. You're saying what can we do until it all builds up? Yeah, so I think, um, Rolanda, can you ask your question? Because I think it was in relation to what uh, Kayla was so, saying earlier. So you were mentioning how you, you know, you give, you comment, you like, you give some more, you add people to your community, but that takes a while. So while that building, what do you do? Because, okay, perfect. Yeah. So, um, and pardon me one second, because I have another call, so I'm going to message her. Hey. Um, I just want to make sure I'm being in my integrity as well. Okay, perfect. Um, so I have a VA net that now works for me. Um, I just, I just hired her. I really, really like her and she uh, works for me like four hours a day. Um, and it's like super cheap, like six, 700 bucks a month. But what she does is what I originally did. So this is what you do in order to build organic. You have to be a person that gives. So if you want to use social media, what you can do is you can go into your specific niche um, through your hashtag, right? So like I'll use like boss babe because I normally work with like women entrepreneurs, right? That have like coaching programs. And so I'll go in through there and I'll find a woman 
that has less than a certain amount of following. She looks like she's active. She's good. And what I will do is I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to become friends with this woman. And I'm going to like five of her pictures. I'm going to comment on three of her pictures. I'm going to go comment on her story. I'm also going to follow her and I'm going to message her directly. And I would say, hey, Kate, um, I really love what you're doing. I love who you are. Um, I want to support you in any way. Hey, um, I'm part of a women's networking group on Monday nights. Would love to have you in there. Um, otherwise, let me know how I can support you. Like, keep going, right? And I honored her. I didn't ask for anything. I didn't ask for her to um, give me her contact information. I saw her stuff. I poured into her. I supported her. I followed her. I don't know what this is about. Like, let's like all these pictures and not follow the person. Like, what are you talking about? Like, that's like what in your head? Like, that's like, if you really want to, if you really like that person, wouldn't you be following them? Like, right. Like that one, that would make sense. So, um, what can you do in order to get like those leads in the, in the meantime is literally sit there and do the work. And I'm telling you, it takes almost two hours to do 12 to 15 people. It takes a, it takes a minute, um, but you'll be really surprised in terms of the response you praising another woman, um, does so many things psychologically and also, um, energetically that you'll not understand. If you had a woman that reaches out to you and she's blowing up your stuff and she's like, hell yeah, girl, I love your content. Like I'm here for you. You're going to be like, who is this girl? And you're going to like her because she just honored the crap out of you. Right. And so from there, when I'm asking her like, Hey, I would like for you to join this, whatever it was, you can use Amanda's Facebook group. You can use, you know, my clubhouse, you can use your own thing. You can do whatever you want. Right. Um, I have a friend that she's a mom and she has host a Thursday night call um, for other moms on zoom. And so whenever she meets a mom, she's like, Hey, I host a mom group on zoom. Would love for you to be a part of it. Um, and people are like, yeah. And then from there, be like, great. Like, um, what's the best number to text you at? You get their number and call you call them authentically call them and say, Hey, um, you know, this is Kayla. So great to talk to you, Kate. Um, I have my call on Thursday nights. Here's the information. Tell me about yourself and start going into qualifying questions, stay in integrity by at the end of the call say, you know, I think that, you know, I would love to work with you. Um, if it's appropriate, can I talk to you about how I would solve the problem that you're talking about and ask for permission versus just pitching her? Cause you want to be transparent. Um, if it's not appropriate, to pitch her and you know that she's not your ideal client, then just ask her how you can support her and what she's going to do in return. She's going to ask you, how could I support you? And you say, Hey, well, I'm trying to talk to more women's groups. I'm trying to, you know, find clients that have this problem and who knows, maybe her sister has that problem, but you're in integrity and you're honoring and you're being authentic and you're being real. And if you just be patient with that and you're in a giving state versus a um, desperate state, all the great things are going to be coming back for you. Um, and one last thing, because I had to hop off here, fear of success. You're a thermometer, okay? A thermometer and you have a temperature. Let's say your temperature is 70 degrees. When shit goes bad in your life, your body's like, oh, no, 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 let me fix this. And then you start getting all the stuff back together. So like if you kind of like were really lazy and all this thing was, were happening, your body would go, oh no, something's going on. And you get back to your identity, right? If I'm a champion, I started eating a bunch of dessert on the weekends. My body would be like, oh, no, 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 we're a champion. Let me get my fitness routine in this morning. Let me go a little extra hard, right? That's the thermometer. Here's the problem, caveat. The thermometer goes the other way. So when shit starts going really good, your body's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're at this level, right? So you start self-sabotaging yourself to get back to this level. So the way that you get to where you want to go and not be afraid of success is three things. Number one, be around people that are way more successful than you so that they can pull you. If you have anyone around you that says, this is too expensive or this, why are you doing this or any negative energy remove yourself? I literally had to pick myself up from Texas and move to Florida. Okay. And then, you know, you know, what's right or wrong in your life. You make that decision. Secondly, um, whenever you align yourself with who you want to be is when you're going to start being performing and behaving differently. Um, if I say, Hey, I am a, um, I am a, a woman that makes 30, 40, $50,000 a month. Right. Like, and that's how much I make. Guess what? If I ordered an Uber, I'd probably order an Uber black versus an Uber regular. I'm going to start behaving differently. Um, and I know that sounds like, Oh, why would you do that? Because 
when you think differently and you surround yourself with people that think differently and you walk and act like a successful person, you're maybe not going to be freaking out over a $50 Uber ride. Right. And like, you just, you're not going to stop blocking energy. And guess what? Maybe I'll get out of a car at a nice place. And somebody is like, Oh, this person must know what she's doing. And it brings more opportunity my way. Weird example, I promise you that it works. I've gotten deals for my shoes. Okay. And then um, lastly, it's true. The first thing Zenia and I noticed was her shoes. Yes. It's <laughs> Thank you. Those shoes are cheap. I got those at Ross, but still. Um, and um, the, the last thing in terms of being successful, being afraid of your success, like if you know your purpose and you know who you're becoming, you need to have people around you that holds you to that so that when you're freaking the fuck out, you can call your friend and they can say, I believe in you and I'm standing for you because I know that you're going to do this. I know that you're called to do this. and I know that you're going to help these people and I'm with you. And when you have that person um, and you have people like that in your life, it's going to set the bar completely differently for you because you need to be around people that are doing better than you that can, that love you and believe in you. I get pour you um, into the right direction. That's why you have coaches. That's why you have mentors. Um, for anyone on here too, just for mindset stuff, uh, DM me on Instagram mindset. And I, I'll, I'll just spend 15 minutes just pouring into you. Just my gift to you for being on this call from uh, Amanda. I know y'all are already in a sales course. So I'm not trying to sell you my sales program. Definitely not. Um, but me as a woman, I want to honor every single one of you in here. And that's just my gift because I know when I pour out, like it comes back tenfold and I would love to support you with what you're doing um, and support who you are. So that's my gift to you guys. I have to hop off of here. I'm so sorry, um, but fine, I love Kayla. you all. Thank you, Amanda, for having me. Thank you, Kayla. Absolutely. All right, guys, um, let me remind you yeah. real quick. Kayla does have a um, surprise, right? She's giving away yes, yes, one yes. of her courses. So if you tag, take a picture of this right now and you tag Kayla Living Boldly and Amanda Abeya, Kayla is going to pick a winner, right? For what was the name of the course? It's called Sell Like a Badass. So it's a Sell like a badass program, yeah. Sell Like a Badass. And the other announcement that we have is starting the third week of every month, we're going to start doing sales role play. So all the questions about, um, oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, what do I say to do the close? All the technical aspects of things, we're going to start covering them more in a sales role play. It's the third week of every month. I think on Wednesdays, we will tell you more about it next week when I have the actual time, <laughs> right? Unless Lisa knows the time and I don't, but <laughs> I know the time. I just don't know in Eastern. It's 8 a.m. Pacific. So it's 11 a.m. Eastern. 11 a.m. Eastern, third Wednesday of every month. We're going to start doing more sales role play so we can, uh, yes, tag on Instagram, Jamie. Yes, good question. Tag on Instagram because that's where we're both the most active. And then third Wednesday of every month, 11 a.m., we're going to start doing a lot more sales role play. We're going to have you guys buddying up with each other and practicing more of the skill set side of sales so you can get comfortable when's the first uh next week i think would be the first one if it's the third week of the month right yep so next week would be the first one all right guys i hope you guys enjoyed this call today i told you kayla is an absolute badass when it comes to sales the mindset of sales what we need in order to stand for our clients and then actually get paid and receive that money so we will see you guys next week bye everybody